Good morning. I call to order the May 21st, 2019 meeting uh, for the Sling County Board of Commissioners. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Shadwick? Here. Commissioner Sparks? Here. Commissioner Richardson? Here. Commissioner Weiss? Here. Commissioner White? Here. I ask you to please stand and join me in a flag salute, followed by a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Before we move uh, forward with uh, our meeting, I want to, I want to give uh, everyone an update on uh, the disaster that's ongoing right now in Saline County. Uh, there was a meeting this morning at 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. or 8.30 actually, uh, attended by about 40 people uh, of various uh, organizations and so forth. Um, regarding procedures and what, what everyone's going to, job is going to be during the, the flooding that is occurring in Saline County right now. A shelter has been uh, set up for residents who wish to evacuate or have been displaced by the, uh, the flooding at the First Covenant Church located at 2625 East Magnolia. A separate shelter uh, has been set up for household pets and uh, that location will be at Barn 1 at the Expo Center and uh, sandbags and so forth are being delivered over there this morning and uh, I'll let Hannah go into that uh, in just a moment uh, regarding other things. Uh, state agencies are involved over there with the emergency people. Uh, there's assistance. this morning, the mayor of New Cambria, officials from Westar, rural fire departments, health department, Union Pacific Railroad, sheriff's department, police department, fire departments, road and bridge department, Solana Regional uh, Health Center, and the Red Cross. And I probably left one or two out, but there were a lot of people there, a lot of concerned people, uh, a lot of coordination that's going on. And um, uh, our new emergency preparedness director, director, uh, Michelle is being indoctrinated at the highest degree, let me tell you. Uh, there probably hasn't been anything like this going on around here for about 10 years or more. And uh, she's right in there and hit, has hit the ground running along with assistance from Bernie and Hannah obviously is still involved uh, heavily with that. So at this time I'd like to, to call on Hannah and to give you a further update regarding what's going on. Sure. Um, so as it sits, Saline County faces the potential for record flooding on especially the Smoky Hill River, River near New Cambria and record flooding or at record flooding at Mulberry Creek near Salina. As it sits now, the Mulberry Creek has the potential to crest at 27.8 feet, which is the previous record that was held in 2007. To give everybody an idea as far as what that would look like, at that level, 27.8 feet roads would flood up to three feet of water in northern Salina, mostly around the Stimmel Road and south of 9th Street to Ohio Street. Uh, we do have uh, maybe that anticipation that other flooding can occur north of I-70 that might potentially cause some road closures. We are not there yet, but we do anticipate those based off of historical data. Along the Smoky Hill River in New Cambria, um, we are looking at record flooding. Previous record was 31 feet, and their projection is 33.2 feet. That is projected to crest on Wednesday morning. Um, as it sits now, the areas of uh, around the city of New Cambria will be flooded along with roads in the vicinity to that river. We do expect widespread flooding in a lot of those low-line areas. And with the predictions we are making, or we are certainly encouraging residents that live not only in those areas, but other areas that are flood prone to make those appropriate plans now to be prepared to evacuate if the conditions warrant. Um, as Commissioner Vidrickson said, both the city and county staff are working on resources and operations plans in anticipation of this event. And one of the things that we do want to cover 
is that uh, we are working on a, um, a just a dedicated website so we can have a one-stop shop basically for people to go to that will have all the information needed, not only on the projection of the river cresting, um, but also road closures and other emergency information. Hopefully we will get that up and running before too terribly long. Uh, information on those closed roads as well as additional er emergency information will be released to the media as well as posted on the Saline County and the City of Saline. Uh, Facebook sites, uh, so those can be used as resources too. Um, in addition to that, we do have an emergency notification system by the name of Code Red uh, that has been uh, set up, and we have already initiated some messaging to those uh, residents in New Cambria and those on the northern end of Salina regarding those potential of the flooding conditions and requesting for residents to make proper plans. Uh, that is something that can be utilized for emergency messaging. If you are interested at all, and receiving those notifications. If you live in those flood prone areas, please visit either the Saline County's website or City of Salina's website and click on the code red icon to sign up. Uh, it can send phone calls, text messages, and email. Um, in, in anticipation of this event, the chairman of the Board of County Commissioners did sign a disaster declaration uh, yesterday afternoon, and that has put us into our emergency operations plan and operations on that end. So we really uh, have uh, appreciated all of the cooperation and collaboration that we've received so far, and our hope is that uh, everything will uh, be uh, coordinated and well uh, well-tuned machine by the time we have uh, some of our operations plans up and running and ready to go. So thank you, Chairman, for your um, participation yesterday, and we will try to keep you guys informed um, on this event moving forward. Very good. Thank you, Hannah. That's a, a detailed report, and it is a very situ uh, serious situation out there. And uh, as the national saying goes, turn around, don't drown. So... We'll move forward then with our, uh, our meeting and it we'll move to the public <coughs> forum where citizens may speak on county government, uh, usually limited to three minutes and uh, pertaining to items that are not on today's agenda. Is there anyone who wishes to address the commission? Um, hello, uh, my name is Dennis Benoit. I live in uh, Geneseo, Kansas, and uh, I'm here today uh, this is my hometown. I was born here, so that's why I uh, say this flooding is severe, but uh, uh, the 51 was even worse. So uh, hopefully everybody does uh, follow instructions and turn around, don't drown. Uh, while I'm here, I'm here today for a little update uh, about our southern border of, uh, of America. I'm concerned over the uh, border is broken. It's completely broken. The caravans are coming up one after another, uh, funded partly by our good friends at the UN and George Soros. And uh, uh, I think uh, Trump uh, has tried to work with the uh, president of Mexico uh, to no avail, and I think he's about ready to uh, do the emergency uh, because it is an emergency. They're just catching and releasing. They're not checking for measles, smallpox, or, or anything, uh, tuberculosis. Uh, the drugs, they're stopping a great deal of drugs from coming in, but uh, the five mile this way, uh, they just can't even estimate how much is coming in. And I'm sure Wichita would be a prime uh, location for it, so um, I think uh, Trump is going to go ahead and uh, uh, through the Constitution, it is stated that his job is to protect the borders. So I think he's going to do that by putting the military down there in full force uh, to stop the flow of immigrants. They're flooding in, there is no way to stop them, and he doesn't want to hurt them. So, uh, I'm all for it. I voted for Trump, and uh, I'm supporting him. And uh, that, but that's the only logical explanation for uh, for what's going to have to happen. And uh, so, uh, I'm all for it. Uh, what can you do at home? Uh, you need to, and this would be a good time. Uh, prepare, be prepared. Uh, you need to be able to take care of yourself, 
keep in touch with your family and see what what's going on, but uh, you need to be prepared and a, at least a, a week worth of uh, food and water in case something does happen. Uh, you can always use it later on. That It's the time you to prepare and it's like insurance. And if you don't use it, that's great. But uh, if you need to use it, the stores are going to be closed. The trucks can't get in. And FEMA is going to arrive about a week after the disaster. So uh, thank you, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Good morning. Good morning. Joan Ratzliff, Salina. I hope the gentleman from Geneseo wasn't talking about county business. Um, but I had something to say about the jail, uh, the jail matter, and I wanted to thank the commission for uh, having their e evening meeting. Um, you didn't have to do that, but it was the right thing to do, and I think it was um, very much appreciated, um, well attended, and um, uh, certainly I anticipate more uh, public involvement in in this matter it's very important and um, I I see it you know it's a big problem but also an opportunity to um, do something better than we have been doing that brought us to this point so um, I wanted to mention that I you know it might have been in there but I didn't see in the consultants report about um, the impact of state policies on the county jail, um, where they um, uh, used to house um, a lot of those prisoners um, and uh, now are requiring the county jails to house them longer than they, than they used to. So that would be an impact. And I want to encourage the county commission to lobby the state to um, go back to um, the state handling the state's business instead of dumping it on the county. So that's one thing. Another thing that I have heard, and I don't have a lot of personal uh, experience with this, is a matter of uh, how uh, policing occurs in Salina, which also affects our jail population where it may be that um, uh, with, a, with just a little bit more of investigation on the law enforcement officer's part, they could discover that the person was not actually in violation or they could make a more sensible judgment call rather than take them to jail. And, and, and the cascade of events that occurs after that that perpetuates them remaining in jail when, when even it, if they were convicted of this offense or alleged offense, they wouldn't be jailed. So there's that. Um, another is, uh, again, from the state, and that is um, how many judges we have, um, um, how many public defenders we have, things like that. Um, and so those are the things that I wanted to mention about that. And also, again, um, thank you for that, having that evening meeting, uh, there was a friend of mine who stood up and spoke to um, prisoners needing uh, treatment, uh, oftentimes rather than incarceration. And I'm sure that uh, Sheriff Kokanowski had mentioned that same issue and other law enforcement also in, in, in uh, corrections. And uh, she was going to um, tell you today that she couldn't be here, so I'm, I'm going to pass along her message. Uh, that's Lene Meyer, and that is that a group of citizens is working on, uh, they visited Reno Jail, they were impressed with their programs, and this group of Salina citizens are working on um, some ideas to bring to you at a later time. So that's all I have on that. All right, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the commission? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission for regular business. Item number one. Approve agenda for public forum as presented. Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the agenda for the public forum as presented. 
Second the motion. It has been moved and seconded that we approve today's uh, agenda for the public forum as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion does carry. Uh, item number two. Approval of county commission minutes for April 30th, 2019. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the county commission minutes of April 30th, 2019 as presented. Second the motion. It's been moved and seconded that we accept the county commission minutes of April 30th, 2019 as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion does carry. Item number three. Approval of county commission minutes for May 7th, 2019. Mr. Chairman, I move we accept the county commission minutes of May 7th, 2019 as presented. Second the motion. Uh, it's been moved and seconded that we accept the county commission minutes of May 7th, 2019 as presented. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Move to uh, item number four. Emergency Medical Services Week proclamation with Fire Chief Kevin Royce from the Salina Fire Department. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Chairman, Commissioners. Kevin Royce, Fire Chief, City of Salina. This is EMS Week, and to designate the week of May 19th to 25th, I'd like to read a proclamation. Whereas emergency medical services is a vital public service, and whereas emer members of emergency medical services teams are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whereas access to quality emergency care dramatically improves the survival and recovery of those who experience any sudden illness or injury, and whereas emergency medical services has grown to fill a gap by providing important out-of-hospital care, including preventative medicine, follow-up care, and whereas the emergency medical services system consists of first responders, emergency medical technicians, paramedics, emergency medical dispatchers, firefighters, police officers, educators, administrators, pre-hospital nurses, emergency nurses, emergency physicians, and trained members of the public, and any other out-of-hospital care providers. And whereas members of the emergency medical service teams, whether career or volunteer, engage in thousands of hours of specialized training, continuing in education to enhance their life-saving skills, and whereas it is appropriate to recognize the value and accomplishments of emergency medical service providers by designated Emergency Medical Service Week, now I therefore, I, Robert Vidrickson, Chairman, Saline County Commission, in recognition of this event, do hereby proclaim the week of May 19th to 25th, 2019, as Emergency Medical Services Week. Uh, I would like to personally thank this governing body for allowing us to be the progress, the most progressive EMS system in the entire state. I'm very ex extremely proud of this department and the services we provide for this community. Um, I think uh, we have exceptional EMS services here. And are there uh, any functions or just activities doing associated? Doing our job every day, <laughs> and that's for sure. I can I can speak uh, firsthand. Uh, I've had experience with the EMS and the fire department. Uh, and uh, I, would, I would have to say that we are second to none. Uh, their response time and their ability to do their job and, and the way they respond is, is just phenomenal. And I'm proud to be part of the deal too. So any other comments from commissioners? Uh, I'd like to second that. I think that uh, the EMS here in Saline County shows how, how a good marriage the county and the city have together. And uh, I was able to um, witness, and I agree with you, uh, Sling County has the finest EMS service in the state, without a doubt, and uh, that's an attribute to yourself and your staff. Well, it's a it's a, an appreciative of, of your support too. Uh, we couldn't do it without you. Not to put you on the spot, but yes, do you know the number of calls you had last year? Total or EMS? EMS. EMS. We were about 7,300. So it's it just kind of keeps creeping up. It's about 80, 80 to 83 percent of our workload is on the emergency medical care side. So um, Amazing. And how, um, I, I've heard this number before, but how many ambulances do we have? In we run four frontline ambulances and have the capabilities of, of putting three more reserves on when needed. And each ambulance is equipped with what, two paramedics? Or? Uh, one paramedic and one EMT. Okay. Um, we also have uh, various members of our department are what's considered critical care EMT or uh, paramedics which allows them to provide inter-facility transfers for more serious patients that not every department can, can do. 
this is not an interrogation, but uh, <laughs> no, <appreciate> information. <laughs> uh, tell me, what is the difference between an EMT and a paramedic? An EMT is responsible and has the skills and abilities and equipment provided to perform what's known as basic life support, um, CPR, uh, minor uh, cuts, abrasions. A paramedic obviously is an associate degree program. It's a two-year program and that enables them to consider or to provide what's considered advanced life support uh, skills such as medication, delivery of medication, um, invasive skills, things like that. Very good. Well, I hear their, their ambulances going up and down the street periodically. <laughs> we are so busy. We, we are know busy. they're on the job. So. <laughs> I do have a signed proclamation for you, so right. well, I think I'll present you with that. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Great job. Very good job. Before we move, move on, Mr. Chairman, I'll go ahead and make the motion that we uh, declare the week of May 19 to the 25th, 2019 as Emergency Medical Service Week. Second the motion. That's been moved and second that we declare the week of May 19th through the 25th, 2019 as emergency, emergency Medical Services Week. And all those in favor of the motion, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion does carry unanimously. Thank you, Monty. Uh, item number five. Human Resources Update with Marilyn Lemer, Human Resources Director. And good morning, Marilyn. Good morning, Commissioners. Um, over this two-month reporting period, we had um, three workers' compensation injuries, but with no lost time, uh, no unemployment appeals. Uh, our insurance plan continues to run very well. Um, we are also at the point where we are doing an IRS uh, Form 720. Um, our consultancy biz is assisting us with the completion of that. Um, this is for the Patient-Centered Outcomes Research Institute, or PCORI. Fee, it is required under the Affordable Care Act, and um, it actually sunsets in 2020, so we'll be paying that fee this year and then paying again uh, one more year, and so it helps to, to fund the Affordable Care Act. Um, employment updates, um, had 14 new hires, uh, four individuals that either transferred or promoted. Um, 14 left us. Um, as far as vacant positions, corrections officers, we continue to look for those. Um, we are sitting on seven vacancies at this time, um, actually five vacancies plus two over hires that we hope to um, put in there just to have a little cushion. Uh, we do have uh, had some testing and interviewing that happened yesterday, and we had four um, good candidates that we're proceeding with, so we hope to get that number down on those corrections officer vacancies. Office manager in the attorney's office, uh, there is pending a selection on that position. We have a part-time clinic receptionist over at the health department. Uh, have an interview scheduled for the 28th. Um, intensive supervision officer at Community Corrections. Uh, we have interviews later this week and um, the legal secretary receptionist position in the attorney's office that I had listed on there, that has, actually has been filled, but it created a vacancy in the, the vehicle registration office. So we'll be posting that vacancy very soon. Uh, tasks coming up, uh, we do have another blood drive um, in June, on June 20th. Uh, we are continuing negotiations with the two bargaining units and we'll, of course, continue to work on filling those vacancies. All right, thank you for a detailed report. Uh, I want to ask a question. I, I noticed in the uh, new employee hires, seasonal mowers, are, are all of those positions filled? They are. <coughs> okay, good. I, I mean, there's a, I noticed some retired names on there that uh, it, it's an ex excellent opportunity for someone who feels like they have idle time to yeah, we go out three, and earn a few dollars and help us out at the same time. We had three time, come so. back from last year. And I see we've, that. We've got some new I ones see that. as well. I, I didn't know how many their positions there were there, so uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, any other questions or interrogation of M Mrs. Lemer from the commission? All right. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you. We'll move to uh, item number six. RFA 148-19, Exceptions and Variances with Hannah Stambaugh, Deputy County Administrator. Good morning again, Hannah. Good morning. Um, in a study session that was held last week on the 14th of May, the Board of Commissioners was informed of the expired terms of the Board of Zoning Appeals members. And in the absence of the Board of Zoning Appeals, this request for action is coming before the commission. 
An individual is proposing a three acre split from a parent parcel for a new residential structure um, and the map for that should be attached to the request for action. The parcel is fronting on Muir Road and just south of Shipton Road. The frontage proposed would be less than that required 200 feet in an agricultural zoning district. The individual selling to the developer uh, the three acres is unwilling to sell additional land which would bring the proposed slit into conformance with the ro those that required road frontage. Furthermore, there's a low-lying drainage area that's immediately adjacent to Muir Road. This area, um, um, this particular area, if filled or moved or modified by a residential structure, may impact drainage characteristics not only on that property but also on adjacent properties along Muir Road. So that the proposed split would be located on higher ground and uh, beyond that drainage um, easement. Currently in our zoning reg regulations in Article 13A-3, it does allow for the option of frontage less than that 200 feet, but this provision is only allowed for existing residential structures with a driveway that has been in place for longer than five years. Staff is currently given only administrative approval for those exceptions not to exceed 10% of the provisions outlined um, in a specific zoning district. Uh, to give you an example, a frontage of 200 feet, it can be reduced by the planning and zoning administrator by 180 feet without a Board of Zoning Appeals consideration, but because this would only be a 30 feet of frontage, it comes before you. Um, although the inability of the developer to acquire additional frontage is technically a civil matter, but due to the low-lying drainage area, staff does believe that this would fall into a special physical circumstance regarding the property and or the surrounding area that would justify granting this particular exception. The alternatives that you have in front of you today is to direct staff to make an administrative decision on this exception based on the physical circumstances of the lot, as well as in the absence of a Board of Zoning Appeals. Staff finds that granting this exception in this case would not violate the purpose and the intent of our regulations, or that we could direct staff to have an applicant file a formal exception to be considered at a public hearing before the Board of County Commissioners. Staff recommends granting the temporary authority to the planning and zoning administrator for exceptions involving frontage only with appeals from the public regarding staff decision to be heard by the Board of County Commissioners. Staff would retain such authority until the Board of Zoning Appeals is reinstated or at some such time that the commissioners would deem appropriate. There is no budget impact for this particular request. To be clear, uh, staff recommends granting temporary authority to the planning and zoning administrator for the exceptions involving the frontage only. That's that's what we're voting on today. That is correct, sir. Are there questions or comments from commissioners? I, I appreciate pushing this off a week so we could see the aerial and, and be able to, to go out there. A uh, couple comments. Do you think that this sets any sort of a precedent? And that's that's always my con concern is then somebody drives by that and said, well, you let them do this and not this. And will there ever be any, I mean, is there some language that will be somewhere that will say 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, why this commission decided to do this if we decide to? I appreciate that comment, Commissioner. Um, so the, you are exactly correct. That is one thing that we do look at in any type of request that comes forward. Um, our intention is um, at the planning uh, to merge our planning commission board with to also be the Board of Zoning Appeals. At that point in time, um, we would have that established kind of uh, a little bit more oversight. Um, in regards to your particular question, we are are able to justify just based off of the topography of that area that it really does truly meet um, that that really that exception uh, for it to be considered a special special physical circumstance regarding the property that would have the impact to not only affect that particular home but also residents or other properties in the future whether it be um, downstream from that location. Right, and just to be clear, is if that was put closer to Muir Road, the potential for flooding of Muir Road would happen because you would have taken away that low-lying area. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Okay. Well, and I'll, I'll back up some of those comments by saying that I, I do believe that those responsibilities lie within that department and that appeals board that is being proposed. 
Uh, I mean, that's what we hire those people for is to make those types of decisions. So that's, mm -hmm. I will definitely be voting with yes on this. So any other comments from the commissioners? Just to get it straight, the logistics, this, uh, this request came from uh, this person and went to the planning and zoning director or the planning and zoning board? This went to the, directly to the planning and zoning administrator. Um, he, but the planning and zoning administrator only has administrative authority to grant up to basically 10% of an exception. Because that exceeds that 10%, that request would go directly to a board of zoning appeals. But in the absence of a board of zoning appeals, the decision is coming directly to you until that can be established. Um, the reason as to why we are um, kind of pushing this in front of or presenting this in front of the commissioners is that we are getting to the point where this particular gentleman is wanting to start construction of the residence before too terribly long. The merging of our Board of Zoning Appeals with the Planning Commission is going to take us probably at least a couple of months to, because there will have to be a, a change in code as well as additional conversation with County Council. But will this still have to go in front of the Planning and Zoning Board to see if it really, if they even approve this? No, sir. Oh. And no, this, this is a request for an exception of what's already written in county code, and that is not something that would go in front of the Planning Commission itself, even on a regular basis. Okay. Right. Gotcha. Is there any public comment? Seeing then I'll bring it back to the Commission for possible action. Mr. Chairman, I want to say I appreciate the staff looking into this and, and um, again, giving us another week to think about it and uh, appreciate Commissioner White's comments last week about that also. So, But I do move that we grant temporary authority to the Planning and Zoning Administrator as recommended in RFA 148-19. Second the motion. Uh, it has been moved and seconded that we grant uh, temporary authority to the Planning and Zoning Administrator as recommended in RFA 148-19. Is there further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion does carry unanimously. That brings us to the end of today's uh, uh, agenda. Uh, we will take a short break and we'll be followed by uh, an administrator's update along with uh, some budgetary items that we will be going over. Um, Appreciate everybody watching today and attending today's meeting. So is there any other announcements come forward? Just a comment, if I may. I'm starting to get a few phone calls of, um, about roads and when they're going to get fixed already. And I would, I would uh, a couple comments. Number one, an individual commissioner does not know the day-to-day -day, um, operations of the road and bridge and what they deem most important. But second of all, um, let's have a little patience about what has happened and what is coming up as soon as it dries out. Your road might not be the first one that gets done. And, and Mr. Chair, I think you memorize this better than I do. How many miles of road do we have? I think the number is 1,078, some right in that neighborhood, and just short of 1,100 miles. Commissioner of White would know that too. So um, <laughs> there's, it's going to take quite an effort to get things back to normal, and I just would I'd like to ask everybody's uh, patience. Uh, I will expand on the, not only does this individual commissioner know the agenda there necessarily, nor do they have the power to do anything without the, the consensus or the uh, approval of the majority of the board. So it does take that action. Uh, a phone call to us can help. Maybe we can notify uh, Road and Bridge, uh, so forth. We'll probably give you that number to call. But uh, for the most part, uh, we are powerless in that regard to T tell them to get a road of rock on XYZ road. So, anything else? I would take a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. Been moved and a second that we adjourn today's meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We're adjourned. Thank you.